Anxiety is an emotional and physical reaction that we have likely all experienced multiple times in our lives. It can be defined as fear of a dangerous or difficult circumstance and is a normal, healthy response. It can improve performance in these circumstances and it likely evolved because of its beneficial effects, such as improved concentration and physical preparedness. However, if excessive, it can impair performance. This is the case in anxiety disorders. Symptoms of anxiety centre around excessive worry or apprehension, but there's also a large physical component, including tremor, nausea, perspiration, tachycardia, or increased heart rate, tachypnea, or increased breathing rate, and developing a dry mouth. Although these feel unpleasant, they're all normal symptoms to experience, and for most people will not happen to a level of severity that impairs their function in day-to-day -day life. However, around 1 in 20 people will experience generalised anxiety disorder. The ICD-10 defines generalised anxiety disorder as excessive worry about everyday events, causing significant distress or functional impairment. Let's break that down a bit more. Excessive worry about everyday events differs to the more common anxiety people experience, as it's not necessarily triggered by a dangerous or difficult situation. For a diagnosis of generalised anxiety disorder, the individual must also have a significant distress or functional impairment as a result of the anxiety they experience. The diagnostic criteria set by the ICD-10 state at least four, with one from autonomic arousal, of the following criteria must be met. Symptoms of autonomic arousal are those triggered by overactivity of our autonomic nervous system, i.e. the part of our nervous system that controls body systems not consciously directed. Autonomic overactivity can cause symptoms such as palpitations, sweating and a dry mouth. Physical symptoms include breathing difficulties, chest pain and nausea. Mental state symptoms, symptoms of tension and concentration difficulties are the other categories. Before we move on, I want to highlight the importance of performing a risk assessment for patients with mental health difficulties. It's essential to assess the risk of any patient presenting with psychiatric illness. Patients can be a risk to themselves, pose a risk to others, and be vulnerable of risk from others. So, taking a psychiatric history should therefore always include questions around these three headings. So, what actually causes generalised anxiety disorder? Well, that depends on what level you look at anxiety. Broadly speaking, generalised anxiety disorder has genetic links, with people born to parents with generalised anxiety disorder being at higher risk. But, it has stronger links to environmental factors. These include things such as chronic stressors, like living with a difficult marriage, or experiencing negative events, like losing a loved one. These two broad factors contribute to inducing the pathophysiology of anxiety. Looking at it on this level, there are multiple theories about what is actually happening in the body that results in the subjective experience of anxiety. Neurotransmitter dysfunction is one theory, particularly problems with low GABA levels or dysregulation of serotonin levels. These are both neurotransmitters, whose function is to relay messages from one neuron to the next, across the synapse. Poor control of cortisol levels produced from the adrenal gland is another theory, where high cortisol levels are thought to contribute to the feeling of anxiousness. Amygdala abnormalities is another. The amygdala is a region of the brain that is highly involved in the experience of emotions. MRI studies have demonstrated how the amygdala is overactive during an anxiety response. Management of generalised anxiety disorder can be split into biological and psychological components. Biological management involves the use of medications. Antidepressants are commonly used such as serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, like sertraline. Also, tricyclic antidepressants. SSRIs are commonly used as the first-line treatments for GAD. In anxiety, SSRIs take time to give a treatment response, usually around eight weeks, 
compared to around four weeks for the management of depression. So, it's important to explain this to patients if they are concerned about a lack of response to the medication. Benzodiazepines are a class of drug that increases the effects of GABA in the central nervous system, giving a calming and sedating effect. Prolonged use of these should be avoided due to common side effects, such as reduced alertness and confusion. It's also common to experience withdrawal symptoms after stopping prolonged use. Beta blockers are a class of medications most commonly known for managing cardiac conditions and hypertension. However, they can have a role in managing the physical symptoms of anxiety. Propranolol, for example, is indicated for palpitations, sweating and tremor when they are symptoms of anxiety. Psychological management focuses on talking therapies, often between a clinical psychologist and the patient. Cognitive behavioural therapy, or CBT, is usually the intervention of choice for generalised anxiety disorder, where the aim is to break down negative thought processes and behaviours that contribute to the patient's symptoms. However, Evidence shows that it's not as effective as SSRI medications for the treatment of generalised anxiety disorder, so it's not usually used as a standalone treatment. Thanks for watching, and feel free to check out my other videos on psychiatry.